Today we're going to be unboxing the Veggie Box 12 Plant Hydroponic System, also known as their K Box. This one is made in China, uh, as to be expected from these sorts of products. Uh, this product also comes in white, and it's the U.S. version. Not quite sure how that differs from other international versions. This is a sub $100 unit. You can expect to pay anywhere from $60 to $85, $90 for this, depending on deals and discounts. And it does have a younger sibling that has nine plant spaces in it, although this one has 12, so it's slightly larger. Okay, let's get to unboxing. Hi, I'm Elijah from Urban Leaf. If you're new to the channel or haven't heard of us before, we help city dwellers fall in love with gardening and be part of a food system that puts the planet and its people first. If that sounds interesting to you, then you know what to do. First off, I have to say, like this little handle, I guess, if you're carrying it, but uh, it seems a little superfluous if you're just ordering it in the mail. The packaging is of decent quality. I wouldn't worry too much about things getting knocked around in there. So assembly is going to be fairly straightforward with this unit. There is no water circulation system, so you're not getting fresh oxygen to your plant's roots, which increases their likelihood of root rot. It's not gonna to be too big of an issue uh, if you're just starting off and you're just uh, experimenting with these sorts of units. Um, this one does have a fairly interesting light panel board and I do have to say that this this quality is fairly decent for the price range. Um, I like the articulating arm here. It doesn't feel like it's going to break right in my hands. And um, this little gap right here is an interesting little design feature. You can tell they did put some, some thought into this. Um, also a touch sensor button on the back here, which is always cool and uh, becoming the norm for these sorts of units. And um, just to come back to what these pieces are exactly, they are simply light blockers so that you don't have any algae or um, other unwanted growth occurring within the reservoir. They're going to block the light from getting in there and causing any of that growth if you are leaving any of these holes uh, without a plant growing out of them. Okay, so let's count these net cups. We have one, two, three, 18, 19, 20 net cups for a 12 pod unit, cool. They might be a little flimsy and prone to breakage, uh, depending on the plastic. They're not labeled, but um, sometimes having these things sit in water for long enough, they do start to break down a little bit at these um, joints and connecting parts right there, so I wouldn't be surprised if I would need to replace these. This product comes with a germination tray, I guess you would call it. Um, it doesn't have a dome, so that's a little questionable. The instructions tell you to fill with water and germinate your plants. You are germinating your plants within these grow cubes, these foam grow cubes. Foam grow cubes are not necessarily new, but they are generally just used for germination of nursery seedlings and uh, propagation of small cuttings. They're not super popular within these tabletop hydroponic units for the reason that they don't provide a great amount of structure and people generally do not like to use foam in their food products. Um, there is a divot, put your seed in, and then it's sliced underneath to allow the plant's roots to grow through, as you can see there, in kind of a cross. Like I said before, foam is not an ideal hydroponic growing medium. For starting seeds, it is all right, and some commercial growers do use this technique, but as far as larger plant growth, I don't think that the foam is going to be sufficient to support a sizable plant, um, but we will see. 
since we will be doing a side-by-side -side grow test in the coming weeks, so look out for that. Basically what is expected is that you'll be taking the foam grow cubes, putting it in here, and plopping it in there. There's not a ton of room uh, to submerge, so you will need to keep the water level relatively high. Um, it says max right there. You're expecting the roots to be already below the max line. So you might actually want to fill it a tiny bit above the max fill level unless you have a uh, sizable plant before you actually even put it in this unit. As per their instructions, you will already be germinating within this tray and then you'll be expected to remove this guy with a plant in it, take this guy and then somehow squeeze that in there without uh, damaging the plant or its roots, which is slightly questionable. Uh, seedlings are very, very fragile. Getting it in there might be a little bit of a challenge. I might just toy with the idea of starting straight in the unit since there's no uh, grow dome on here in the first place to hold in humidity and moisture. Therefore, it'll take a little bit of tinkering. Anyways, I do like the fact that they included this nice little tray for germination, whether or not you decide to go about that route or just germinate straight in your unit. I would probably put a little piece of tape over that though, just to keep moisture and humidity in for optimal germination conditions. Now for a couple measurements on this thing. So full setup uh, length, about 16 and a half inches. Uh, I'd call it 17 to be safe if you're putting it in a tight space. The reservoir is about three inches deep. Um, the whole unit is about six and a quarter inches deep itself. And from bottom to top of the light, about 15, 15 and a half inches. Not, a, not too large of a unit. Um, could fit on a kitchen countertop. Um, it can also be fairly sleek like that, have a low profile. Um, one thing that I should note is that this light is adjustable, but only at this point right here. It does not go up and down, and this main arm does not extend uh, like in some other units that you will see. So let's get some par readings on this thing once we turn it on. You can see the light is fairly bright and it says in the instructions there is a built-in timer. Not quite sure how many hours a day that'll run, but we will see when we actually put this thing to the grow trial test. But for now, let's just get a par reading. Right here near the base of the light, we're getting a reading of mid 120 micromoles per meter per second. Towards the middle, getting a reading of about 153, 154 not bad and towards the far side we're getting a reading of 117 118 120 okay so not bad don't know how many hours a day it's on for but um seems about right for a product like this pros and cons um we'll start off with the cons then goes to the pros um this light right here not a big fan of the way that this bends um you might as well just fix it right there because you're not gonna get much benefit unless maybe you're just doing seedlings right here, um, bending it down like this. Um, another con is that it has basically just one size net cup. This isn't a standard net cup as far as I know. Um, they're a little bit on the cheaper side. Uh, I could see these breaking fairly easily and you are going to have to go and find the right size rock wool for these units. Um, that is probably just like three quarter inch rock wool though. So not that big of an issue, uh, but I'm not a huge fan of the foam grow cubes that this came with. And our last con is going to be the fact that there is no water circulation uh, system or device. So your water is not going to be getting oxygenated in any real sense. Uh, if you have any air stones or an air pump, you can certainly oxygenate your own water, but this is not going to do it for you. As far as pros go, um, I like this little water removal thing, make it easier to put water in this thing. Um, 
There is this max fill line, although I think you're going to want to fill it a tiny bit higher than that. Honestly, I am impressed by the construction of this unit given its price point. I like this simple slide up, slide in light thing. Uh, I think the automatic timer is fairly nice. The design is somewhat streamlined. It's fairly sleek for a model of this uh, price range. The light seems all right as well. So yeah, not a bad unit for the price point. All in all, this unit is fairly solid. I'm actually somewhat impressed with the quality of the construction as compared to some more popular units. This one definitely feels fairly solid and it has a fairly light weight. I would say maybe, maybe three or four pounds at most. And I'm comfortable that this thing isn't going to fall directly apart on me um, a few weeks into using it. Uh, but we'll see, we'll be putting this one to the test uh, side by side with some other tabletop hydroponic units. So look out for that video series in the future. And I hope you enjoy, like and subscribe for more interesting indoor gardening content and keep on growing.